This is a video on Pro Tools, bit depth, and when you might want to consider using Dither. In this session, I've got a 16-bit uh, music track, a 24-bit sound effects recording, and then on the master, I've got this plugin called Bitter. Now this is a free plugin from Stillwell Audio, and it's a bit scope. So let me just show you their website. When the plugin is actually in use and you're running audio through it, it will indicate the number of bits currently active by these horizontal lines. So for example, if the audio is only 16 bit, the top 16 bits will be active and you won't see anything below it. If it's 24 bit, the top 24 bits and, and so on. So let me just run this 16 bit track. So sure enough, you can see that 16 bits are being indicated there. If I play the 24 bit sound effects file, Sure enough, 24 active bits. So it's a useful indicator of the bit depth of the audio which you're actually running through it. But one thing which is worth considering as well is that in modern di digital audio workstations, whenever you perform any kind of calculation, as in something which changes the audio, level changes, panning, processing, then it's gonna tap into a much greater internal bit depth than the audio itself uses. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I run this 16-bit track again, and I make even the slightest level change, now you can see that it's indicating it's 32 active bits. And that would be the same on the 24-bit track as well. So 24-bit sound effect, so cafe recording, make a level change, we're using 32 bits. That also applies to um, any kind of processing. So let me just put a Let's go with the standard 7-band EQ on this. If I don't make any changes to anything, if I'm just passing audio through it, then it should be bit for bit, so 24-bit. If I make any kind of change, again, no matter how subtle or extreme, then it will be accessing this much greater internal bit depth. So the point of this is that this has a bearing on when you might want to consider using dither in the session. So it's fairly common knowledge that whenever you reduce the bit depth, let's say for example you were going from 24 bit in your session to uh, a destination of 16 bit, then you know the common view is that you apply dither, and that's that's correct because it prevents truncation of um, of the lower uh, bits in the audio. However, I would say it's necessary not only to dither when you go in from a higher bit depth, but also to dither no matter what, whenever your uh, final bounce is, is going to 16 bit. And the reason for that is because of the fact, let's just combine a couple of things here. You know, you can see whenever we're doing stuff, the audio is gonna end up at 32 bit, irrespective of what the session is set to. You know, this is a 24 bit session, but still that, that has no bearing because Pro Tools internally is going to be processing uh, using this much greater bit depth. So the point is, it's necessary to dither. So if I put this dither on, let's just go with the power dither. Okay. In fact, let me bypass this. There you, you can still see using up uh, 32 bits. However, activate the dither. And you can see the dither is now doing its job correctly. So it's actually dithering that audio to 16 bits. And you can tell at a glance that it's 16-bit dither because you can see the signal activity around the least significant bit, which in this case is the 16th bit. Um, just as an example, let me show you if I use one of the Waves dither, which has 20-bit 20, 20 dither available, you can see that now we're seeing activity around uh, the 20th bit, and if I change that to 16, it does that. So it's a good indicator if there's ever any doubt as to what type of dither you're applying or what the bit depth of the actual audio is, then Bitter is quite a, a useful tool to, to check that out. So let me just get rid of that dither for a second. There is one other thing which is important and if I create a, an audio track here, let's just mute these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just deliberately record from, well, deliberately record complete silence. So I'm recording from a, an unused internal bus here because I want to record true silence. If I record from an, an audio input, even if there's nothing connected, there is also always the possibility that I might actually record some low-level hiss. So 
let me check that I'm doing this correctly. So we've got a 24 bit session. Whatever your session bit depth is set to at the time of recording, that's what the audio that you record will be. So if I record now at 24 bit, this piece of audio will be 24 bit. If I subsequently change it to 16 bit and make a new recording after changing it, then any subsequent subsequently recorded audio will be at the new bit depth. So let's go with 24 bit. I'm just gonna record silence. Okay, so it's just recording a file, basically a file of nothing. Okay, and there it is. So we've got nothing and uh, if I just crank up the level on this, unsurprisingly, we've still got nothing because we've recorded true silence. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because you might, you might be aware that in uh, Pro Tools there's an option in the clip list to export clips as files. And you can see that we can change various attributes including the bit depth. However, where's the preference for dither well there isn't one so what this is actually going to do is it's going to apply dither for us and that might not necessarily be a good thing let me just do this and show you so if i export this okay that's our 16 bit export and then i'll import it okay let's drop this in okay so that's the audio which was just exported now Let's just crank that one up, crank them both up. So that's the 24-bit original, which is going to run hopefully as complete silence, which it does. And this is the version which I exported from the clip list at 16-bit. And you can see that there's something going on there. Let me just crank the game up a little bit. So if I use the trim plugin, let's turn it up by another 24 dB. So you can quite clearly hear there's a lot of hiss there, which isn't on the original. So what's happened here is that because we've exported it from the clip list and we've changed it from 24-bit to 16-bit, Pro Tools has automatically applied dither and we don't have any control over that. Now what type of dither does it apply? Well, I'll just create another track here. It actually applies the old uh, Pro Tools dither. So in Pro Tools there's two main types of dither. We've got power dither, psychoacoustically optimized word length reduction, really catchy name, which is the one that's generally seen as the better one, and the old one, which you know is is still included, but it's probably best avoided because arguably it doesn't sound as good. And if I just put this on a track and increase the level once again. So you probably hear that that sounds similar to that, except I'll probably have to push this up. So that that's essentially now the same level. So that is the same as that. So in other words, Pro Tools, when you export clips from the clip list and you're changing the bit depth, you know, from 32-bit flow or 24-bit down to 16-bit, well, the software is automatically going to apply this old Avid Dither plugin, 16-bit with noise shaping. So if you don't want it to do that, well, you might want to find another way of doing it. Maybe you should uh, dither it yourself or, or bounce it. Um, the other thing which uh, I just want to mention briefly now is about the benefits of using 32-bit internal, well, 32-bit float as a, an actual bit depth for the session. So let's route this audio track to a new track, which is going to be okay, stereo audio track. And what I'll do here is I'll deliberately completely distort massively the audio like that. And uh, I'll make a recording You might want to just turn your monitors down now because we're going to be playing some extremely loud, incredibly distorted audio. Here we go. It would help if I put it into record. Distortion coming up.
okay. So because this was set to 16-bit when I made that recording, that's a 16-bit recording. Let's do one at 24-bit. Again, watch your monitor level. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, sounds like shit. So 32-bit float. Let's do the same thing. All the settings are the same otherwise. It's still, you know, at plus 36 dB. It's just that the bit depth is different. Okay, so they would seemingly now be completely unsalvageable because they've actually been recorded clipped. You know, clip gain isn't gonna do anything. It's just gonna turn down an already distorted piece of audio. And that'll do that on all of them, you know, whether it, it doesn't matter what the, they were recorded at 16, 24 or 32, it's still going to be distorted. However, the benefit of 32-bit float is that you have over 1500 decibels of internal headroom. So if I use this gain plugin, so I'm going to process these as individual files. Let's just bring this down by, well, at least by 36 dB. So we can, that'll do just over 36. And when I process these, what you'll see is quite an interesting difference between the 16, 24 and 32 bit float versions. So you can tell immediately, they don't all sound the same. So the first one is basically a quiet version of the distorted audio. Equally as bad, but just quiet. Second one, same thing, quiet distorted audio. But wait till you get to the third one. We've completely restored um, the audio. The clipping has gone entirely and uh, we've maintained the original sound. So that's a few little points about Pro Tools, uh, dither and bit depth. So I suppose the in summary, what I'm trying to say is Dither whenever you go into 16-bit, irrespective of what the audio is. Be aware that when you export uh, clips from the clip list and you're reducing the bit depth to 16-bit, it's going to apply the Avid Dither. And uh, also, have a look at Bitter. It's a really useful plugin from Stillwell Audio, so it's just stillwellaudio.com. I hope this video has been useful, and I'll see you next time.